related videos, please subscribe this channel. Enable the bell icon to get notification of latest videos. Hello everyone. I strictly believe you all are safe and sound with your family members. I am here with the topic of intravenous cannulation in today's video. Before we enter into the topic, we must know what is an intravenous cannula is. An intravenous cannula is a flexible tube which when inserted into the body is used either to withdraw fluid or insert medication. Cannulas also known as venflones are available in various colors each of which correspond to the size of the tube. So, an intravenous cannulation is a technique in which a flexible cannula is placed into the patient's bloodstream to provide venous access. Indications for intravenous cannulation to administer fluid, medication, chemotherapy, nutritional support, blood or blood products or radiologic contrast agents. Contraindications There is no absolute contraindications. However, cannulation should be avoided if possible in an injured, infected or banned extremity. It's important for us to know about the cannula and its sizes before we start the procedure. So let's have a look at the parts of a cannula. Intravenous cannulae are available in various sizes and designs. The different gorges vary in lumen sizes and length of the cannula. Different sized cannulae have different colors for easy identification. In this case, we need to remember that larger the number, smaller the lumen. Don't forget. First, we see about the yellow colored small cannula which is 24 gauge, mostly used in infusions of neonates and pediatrics. Not only for intravenous fluid administration, but also used in pediatric and neonate blood transfusions. This is used for slow flow rates, means 20 ml per minute. We can infuse 1 liter fluid in 50 minutes. Blue cannula. It is 22 gauge used in pediatrics, blood transfusion and fluid infusion. Also used in elderly and oncology patients. Mainly used for slower infusions. 36 ml per minute, we can infuse 1 liter in 28 minutes. Pink cannula, 20 gauge, mainly used for routine infusions and IV access. This is an ideal for IV infusion. Infusion rate is 60 ml per minute, 1 liter we can infuse within 17 minutes. Green cannula 18 gauge, mainly used for 
viscous solutions administration rapid fluid replacement trauma rapid blood transfusion 90 ml per minute we can administer 1 liter fluid in 11 minutes through this cannula white cannula 17 gauge rarely used mainly used for rapid fluid replacement blood transfusion trauma and major surgery infusion rate is 130 ml per minute gray colored cannula 16 gauge indicated in the case of large fluid volume administration rapid fluid replacement trauma rapid blood transfusion high risk surgery its infusion rate is 180 ml per minute means 1 liter of fluid we can administer in 5.5 minutes through this cannula cannula in orange color 14 gauge 240 ml per minute is its flow rate 1 liter of fluid we can administer in only 4 minutes rapid fluid replacement blood transfusion trauma and major surgery are the indication for this cannula size selection for any client or patient in general the smallest size of the cannula can be effectively used to deliver the prescribed therapy this minimizes the risk of damage to the vessel ensures blood flow around the cannula thus reduces the risk of phlebitis however in an emergency the patient often requires large volumes of infused fluid over a short period of time in such cases the largest gauge that is likely to fit in the chosen vein should be used smaller gauge cannula is used in children that is 22 and 24 gauges 18 to 20 gauges are used for most of the venous access procedures gauge 16 is the largest cannula and is used preferably in fast resuscitation and fluid replacement finding a suitable vein for cannulation it is essential to spend time looking closely for suitable veins points to note provide comfortable position to the patient ensure good light take time and look at all the usual sites and choose the best option choose the vein carefully your good vein must be run straight stands up a little fills and empties it is easy to splint procedure steps step 1 introduce yourself to the patient and clarify the patient's identity explain the procedure to the patient and gain informed consent to continue inform that cannulation may cause some discomfort but that is will be for short period of time don't forget to explain that the needle which is used to prick should be disposed and only the tube will remain in situ this will make the client feel more comfortable after the procedure step number 2 ensure that you have all the equipments ready as follows alcohol cleanser gloves an alcohol wipe a disposable tourniquet an iv cannula a suitable plaster a syringe saline and a kidney tray step 
sanitize your hands using alcohol cleanser. Step 4. Position the arm so that it is comfortable for the patient as well as the staff to identify a good vein. Apply the tunique and recheck the vein. This is our step number 5. Next step is to put on your gloves, clean the patient's skin with alcohol wipe and let it dry. Step number 7. Remove the cannula from its packaging and remove the needle cover, ensuring not to touch the needle. Step 8. Stretch the skin distally and inform the client that they should expect a sharp scratch. Step number 9. Insert the needle. Bevel upwards at about 30 degrees. Advance the needle until a flashback of blood is seen in the hub at the back of the cannula. Ten step. Once the flashback of blood is seen, progress the entire cannula a further 2 mm, then fix the needle. Advancing the rest of the cannula into the vein. Next is to release the tunicate. Apply pressure to the vein at the tip of the cannula and remove the needle fully. Remove the cap from the needle and put this on the end of the cannula. Step 12. Carefully dispose the needle. Step 13. Apply the dressing to the cannula to fix it in place and ensure that the date sticker has been completed and applied. Step 14. Fill the syringe with saline and flush it through the cannula to check for patency. If there is any resistance or if it causes any pain or you notice any localized tissue swelling, immediately stop flushing, remove the cannula and do the procedure again in an another good vein. Step number 15. Dispose of your gloves and equipment in the clinical waste bin. Ensure the patient is comfortable after the procedure and thank them for the cooperation. Complications of intravenous cannulation. Extravasation, hemorrhage, hematoma, infection, infiltration, phlebitis, puncturing and artery, thrombophlebitis. Nurse's responsibility. Choose the site carefully, aiming to avoid an excessive number of attempts. Defer to another staff member after three unsuccessful attempts. Use aseptic technique, aim to provide pain relief, secure the successfully inserted cannula carefully by using a splint and appropriately placed tapes. The distal fingers or toes and insertion site must be remain visible for regular inspection. Observe promptly with signs of phlebitis, induration or swelling. Consider elective recannulation after 48 to 72 hours to minimize infection. Remove unused cannulas which can act as a source of infection. 
the superficial veins of the upper extremities are preferred to choose of the lower extremities for peripheral venous access as they interfere less with patient mobility treat veins with respect always I hope you like this video. If you did, please do this video a like. Share it with your friends. Hit the subscribe button to encourage me to create more such videos. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Take care dear friends.